Here's a question that might seem simple at first glance. For what values of n does this expression equal a perfect square? In other words, we want to find all positive integers and in where this expression equals some integer k squared. Whenever you see a problem like this, the first thing to try is plugging in some small values and seeing what happens. Starting with n equals 1, we get 3 minus 2 minus 1, which is 0. And 0 is indeed a perfect square, so we have our first solution. For n equals 2, we get 9 minus 4 minus 1, which is 4. And 4 equals 2 squared, so that's another solution. What about n equals 3? We get 27 minus 8 minus 1, which is 18. Now 18 is definitely not a perfect square. But then for n equals 4, we get 81 minus 16 minus 1, which is 64. And that's 8 squared. So we have a third solution. Now here's the key insight. As n gets larger, 3 to the n grows much faster than 2 to the n. This means these lucky coincidences where we get perfect squares should become increasingly rare. To turn this intuition into a proof, we'll use a classic strategy. Split the problem based on whether n is odd or even. Let's start with odd values of n. We already know n equals 1 works, so we need to check if any odd n greater than 1 can give us a perfect square. Here's where modular arithmetic becomes our friend. Let's look at our equation modulo 4, since perfect squares have a very predictable pattern when you divide by 4. Notice that 3 is equivalent to negative 1 when working modulo 4. So 3 to an odd power is also equivalent to negative 1 modulo 4. Now, for the 2 to the n term. When n is at least 3, 2 to the n is divisible by 8, which means it's equivalent to 0 modulo 4. So our equation becomes much simpler. We end up with k squared being equivalent to 2 modulo 4. But here's the problem. Any perfect square when divided by 4 can only leave a remainder of 0 or 1, never 2. And that's our contradiction. So n equals 1 is the only odd solution we'll ever find. Now let's tackle the even case, which turns out to be much more interesting. If n is even, we can write it as 2m. Notice how this reveals that we already have one perfect square in our expression. So we're asking, for which values of m does our expression equal this perfect square? Let's expand this squared term using the standard formula for squaring a binomial. Perfect. The 3 to the m squared terms cancel out, and we're left with a much simpler equation. Let's rearrange this to get all the exponential terms on one side moving terms around algebraically. Now we can factor out a2. Great, now we have two times three to the m minus one. Let's rewrite four to the m as a power of two. Since four equals two squared, four to the m becomes two to the two m. Now we divide both sides by two. And here's our key equation. Three to the m minus one equals two to the two m minus one. If we check small values, this works when m equals 1, giving us n equals 2, and when m equals 2, giving us n equals 4. But here's the thing. For larger m, the right side grows much faster than the left side. The left side multiplies by 3 each time, while the right side essentially multiplies by 4. This means for m greater than or equal to 3, our expression is never the square of 3 to the m minus 1. We must now prove it cannot be any other perfect square either. Here's the strategy. We'll show that our expression gets trapped between two consecutive perfect squares. This graph makes the idea crystal clear. The upper curve shows 3 to the m minus 1 squared. The lower curve shows 3 to the m minus 2 squared. And these points show our actual expression. See how for m equals 3, our point sits strictly between the two curves? That means it can't be a perfect square. Now let's prove this rigorously. Let's formally prove the inequalities that the graph suggests. First, we prove the upper bound. We need to show our expression is strictly less than the square of 3 to the m minus 1 for m, 
greater than or equal to 3. Expanding the right side and canceling the square of 3 to the m term and rearranging, we get the same inequality we already proved is true for m greater than or equal to 3. The upper bound holds. Second, we prove the lower bound. Our expression is greater than the square of 3 to the m minus 2. Expanding the left side and canceling the common term. And rearranging gives this inequality. 4 to the m plus 5 must be less than 4 times 3 to the m. We can verify this for m equals 3. 69 is less than 108. It holds. Because the left side grows by a factor approaching 4, while the right side grows by a factor of 3, this inequality holds for all m greater than or equal to 3. The lower bound is secure. So we've proven that k squared is trapped between two consecutive perfect squares, which means it can't be a perfect square itself. So let's put it all together. We found exactly three solutions. n equals 1, 2, and 4. That's it. No other positive integers work. Before we finish, here's a really cool connection to one of the deepest theorems in number theory. Remember this equation from our even case? We needed to find when this equals 1. This connects to Catalan's conjecture, which was finally proven in 2002. It says that 8 and 9 are the only consecutive perfect powers. And remarkably, our case with m equals 2 gives exactly that unique solution. This powerful theorem immediately tells us there are no other solutions. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this exploration of this solution, please like this video and subscribe for more mathematical deep dives.